This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. One. Bingo, we're back. This is ThinkTech Hawaii, and today we're doing Community Matters, a special show at the one o'clock block. We're talking about energy. We actually, we're talking about more than energy. Our special guests are Michelle Daigle. She is the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum uh, Graduate Research Assistant for Sharon Moriwaki at UH Manoa. And Erin uh, uh, Bear, mostly Bear, uh, Brach, is it? Brach? That's yeah? correct. Okay. And uh, he is also uh, a Graduate Research Assistant for Sharon Moriwaki at the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum at the University of Hawaii. And the title of our show, which is, which is actually the title of the program we're going to discuss, it's the same thing, okay? If it's different, there's something wrong. <laughs> it's called Making Good Plans, the operative word, plans for a sustainable, resilient Hawaii. And it's the title of the legislative briefing, which these guys are working on, mm -hmm. which is going to take place on January 10th, which is one week from today, yeah. at the auditorium in the... Hawaii Capitol building. Wow, exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, as, as Hawaii Energy Policy Forum does every single year, just before the session opens. Session opens on what, January 17, I want to say? Yes. And uh, January 10th is before. And the mm -hmm. idea here is to educate um, and sort of warm up, if you will, uh, the legislators of the Hawaii State Legislature in, the, in 2018. Uh, on issues relating to energy, sustainability, and mm -hmm. resilience. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's get down to the details. What are you guys doing on this program first? Well, right now what we're trying to do is finalize our speakers and really come uh, together on our three separate panels. We have a major panel in the beginning of keynote panel that will set up the entire day. And then followed by that, so we'll be touching on some key points and one of our, our key people actually that will be I'm presenting is um, will be uh, Denise uh, Antoli. Yeah, we're going to go through that. Yeah. Okay. So Erin, there. If, if she's doing that, what are you doing? Um. Well, what am I doing? That's a good question. Um. You came to Think Tech to find out what Bear is doing. It's yeah. a cliffhanger question. Go. Um. Well, we've it's been a cooperative effort. We've been working with the speakers and organizing yeah. this event. Um, it's really setting the foundation for providing information for the legislatures for learning about how Hawaii can be more resilient and more sustainable, especially with this unpredictable climate that we live in. Yeah, yeah you bet. You know, and it's, it's interesting, in, in some ways it's confusing that we have climate change, we have energy, yeah. and we have to establish the connection, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is a program different, differing from earlier programs in earlier years. You know, where the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum is, yes, it's doing energy, it always does energy, yeah. but energy, sort of in the concept of our community, our mm. state, is more than just energy it touches yeah. sustainability and resilience. Yeah. So why don't you help me with that intersection, Michelle? Well, this year what we're doing is different is we're, we are partnering, partnering with the um, Office of Planning. And so the State Office, the of, state planning. Of, office of Planning, Leo, Leo Asuncion, yeah. is, has come on board and we're really trying to work at that intersection because at the focus of all of that is having a good, solid plan. Yeah. If you don't have a plan, then it really makes it very ad hoc as you're going okay. through and you're trying to address so these issues of a resiliency. Plan for what? A plan for for integrating energy into Hawaii in in response to climate change, in response to increasing hazards having to do with either vulnerability with um, oil prices spiking, um, and also with these incredible weather patterns that we're seeing um, all in either the Atlantic or in the Pacific yeah, Ocean. Sure. It's getting very severe, yeah, yeah. and Hawaii's right in the thick of things. Okay, um, Bear, how, how's she doing, and how much of what she said do you agree with? Uh, I agree with all of it I so far. I thought you'd say yeah. that. Um, so what does sustainability mean? Um, well, that's kind of a loaded question in the, ter in the terms of what sustainability, what are we looking for? Um, yeah. Sustainable, what is sustainable? Sustainable well, is, I guess, it keeps on going. Yeah. Like the ever ready um, battery, it just keeps on going, so it's sustainable. It's, it doesn't fall apart, right? We want that's sustainability. We want, How does that apply in, you know, in, the, in the world of um, social science? Uh, we want Hawaii to be like, they can do things on their own, to be sustainable in energy, as Michelle mentioned. and. With, we import 90% of the food that we have here, so if a weather event was to happen or some geopolitical crisis was to occur, 
we want to have a sustainable future, so with all these external factors, we can provide for ourselves. You're and making the assumption that we will have, A, those events will happen. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to disagree. Um, and B, that um, we are going to be on our own when, you know, likely on our own when those events happen. Well, is that, is that what's implicit it's here? Being 2,000 miles away from the United States, it puts us in a unique situation of yeah. we are kind of on our own, but yet connected at the same time. Yeah. So, with the increasing weather and extreme weather patterns that are happening, we've been so fortunate to not be hit by a major hurricane. Yeah. So, well, I always say yeah. every every day, you know, it's a beautiful day. Today's a beautiful day. Is a day closer to the next big weather event. Yeah. Yeah. So why do we care about this? Why don't we just wait for it to happen and deal with it then? Well, if you do that, then when something major does happen we're not going to have a coordinated effort to, to deal with this. We're actually less resilient if we wait in this kind of, um, you know, response type of environment. Yeah. We want to preempt that type of situation. Yeah. And to do that, we really need to sit down, look at how we are all... We Suppose we ignore it. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> wait for it to happen. And why do we, you know, so it'll happen. It'll be an interesting day. Well, interesting in the Chinese sense. It'd be very interesting. Why do we care? Why are you, why are you working so hard on this program? Why, why, why don't we just we, let it go? We don't want Hawaii to be like Puerto Rico. Ah. We don't want Hawaii to have a situation where you have an extreme weather situation or another type of hazard that comes in and throws us for a loop because we are waiting to yeah. see how we might react that well, destroys our grid. But let's look at Puerto Rico for a minute. Of okay. course, they still even now what is it, three, four months already? Yeah. They don't have electricity, still 50% electricity. Yeah. That's really an awful way yeah. to live. And it means there's no economy, zero economy. Yeah. Right? And people are sick. They're not getting well. Exactly. Um, their lives are like on hold at best yeah. and maybe worse. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess what, what I get out of Puerto Rico is that you could die. Yeah. You could die. People you know could die. Um, lots of people could die. It depends on how extreme it is, right? It does. It depends so on So you're me. trying to save lives, aren't you, Michelle? I got you now. <laughs> I am. I'm trying to save. I'm trying to save lives, trying to save economy, trying to save. It's not just, it is, has to do with life or death, but also has to do with standards of living, too, leading up to that. We shouldn't wait for some type of an extreme event to change the, the ways in which we go about our daily lives. Yeah. Why didn't you have a program like this last year or the year before? We just so. really weren't ready. It's, I think, um, with the state legislator going ahead with the Paris Climate Accord and um, really setting us up for this conversation. Um, so this the is, right time. This is the yeah. right time to yeah, talk okay. about it. What, what, is the, what is the intersection that makes you say it's the right time, Bear? Um, well, this unique opportunity we're having partnering with the State Office of Planning is so unique. Having we want the state office to be the center of all the planning that's going on in the state. I know it sounds kind of interesting, but we have a lot of silo planning that can occur. Some people can be stuck in... <clears throat> you're trying to tell me that there's a lot of planning going on, but it's not coordinated. Is that what you're trying to say? It, it, could, it happens. Yeah. And we're, we it could want, happen. Yeah, and we want that... It's we, so politically correct there. <laughs> I'm trying to be, I guess. <laughs> what, what, what kind of planning are we doing here in the state? I mean, you know, around this area, around the, the notion of making a more sustainable, resilient Hawaii, who's, who's doing what, as we know today, right now? Well, we're, Hawaii's in a unique situation being the largest metropolitan area and being one of the most isolated ones in the, uh, the Pacific. And we feel the effects of climate change more than any other place in, in the world. Yeah. And... Having 1.2 million people on Oahu, we need to start planning for more people mm -hmm. and the, the, shrimp, uh, the smaller surface area of, of an island that we're going to have. So planning for this and putting the correct policies and actions in place to protect the quality of life and... But why the, now? Well, why, <laughs> why, why now? Why, why is this important well, now? Well, so I think of this as a, meta as a metaphor. We, everybody does certain things to prevent a heart attack or heart disease. You work out, you take an aspirin, you exercise, you do that. You plan so you can be properly prepared when a certain disaster yeah. hits. Yeah, okay. So, but I mean, it sounds like, I'm taking a wild guess here, <laughs> it sounds like somehow these events are somehow closer to us 
and that we are more aware of them, we begin to acknowledge the realities, the danger. And so it would be a good time when you, when you, rea when you realize the, the danger, it would be a good time to try to plan. Yeah. Absolutely, but we really shouldn't wait for it to get to that, that well, peak point. how immediate is this? Well, I mean, I mean over some the past, of these things <clears throat> could wait decades. You know? could, it could, but, but others. I mean, just last, I think it was just this past year, you, if you had a satellite picture of the Pacific Ocean, you saw three intense hurricanes yes, right. all lined up, one right that south. Could have been us. You know, it's just. We missed the bullet. We missed them all. We yeah. keep missing the bullet. And while we can be, we're extremely fortunate for that, who's to say that in the next moment we're not going to have that? And so yeah. there is this. Um, inability to fully predict what will happen, but at the same time, that inability to not concretely predict what what will occur yeah. should should spring us to action. Okay, so I mean, this is this, this intersection, this integration of energy and all the other things. Why is the Energy Policy Forum interested in you know climate change and sustainability, such as is going to be revealed in this program? That's a really that's a very good question. We are interested in this um, because at, at this juncture in time, we're understanding that if we just focus purely on energy itself, all by, it, all by its, its own, we are in effect silo, siloing ourselves as well. We have to start interconnecting. It's this, it's this uh, cross-fertilization between the different departments, between different sectors. Just recently, um, over at our Hawaii Clean Energy Day back in August, we were really trying to do this um, between the intersection between um, energy and transportation has been neglected. And I'll agree to that. we really need to sit down and look at how both of these different sectors can work to support each yeah, other. That's something you said a minute ago. I mean, the economy, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which you know affects our quality of life, our getting up in the morning yeah. and prosecuting our day. So <clears throat> if you don't have a ready supply of mm -hmm. energy that, that you can afford, sure. um, you don't have an economy. No, you don't. I mean, it's a direct proportion, good energy, good economy. Mm -hmm. Um, so if we lose energy for any reason, you know, and then we are not sustainable as an economy. So I think it's it's joined at the hip somehow. It is, you know? and specifically in Hawaii, where we um, a lot of our economy is based on tourism, it actually uses quite a bit of energy to even bring in people to sustain our economy. We are reliant on um, large numbers of of tourists from Europe. Yeah. Um, from Asia, so it's from the relational. It's mm -hmm. relational. If we don't get the tourists, okay, we're not going to mm -hmm. have an economy, In and we can't get the tourists if we don't have energy. Exactly. So this is this is a big effect from one 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 thing only. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We really need to see it as a web where you may have um, an intersection of one or two strands that are really easily recognizable on one plane, and on another plane, you'll have another group. But if you tug on one place, you're going to have this movement at the other end of the web. It's just we don't see the direct connection. We need to start thinking of, of energy, sustainability, transportation, um, agriculture, so, so biofuels. So what's the wraparound term for it? The you, you've listed a bunch of things there. It, it's, it's an ecosystem. It's a, it's a social ecosystem. It's a social That's ecosystem. That's what you guys do at the School of Social Sciences, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's what you study all day. You're both studying there, am I right? Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. How much of what she said do you agree with? I mean, in the last bite. Yeah. I 100%. What would you add to it? Um, um, I would just say that, like Michelle mentioned, it is a web and there are ebbs and flows of what is going on. Yes, you pull one end, another end's going to be affected. Yes. But there needs to be communication of, mm -hmm. hey, this we're doing this over here. You might feel this effect. So can you please prepare for it so the citizens and the residents might feel this effect? So if one part of the web doesn't properly plan, it's not just this, yeah. the DOE is not just going to be feeling the effect, it's the DOT and the, yeah. our public health and so yeah. on and so forth. Exactly. Well, that suggests that, you know, we have very complex problems because this involves everything in our society, mm -hmm. directly or indirectly. It's a complex problem that can only be handled by a central authority, right? <laughs> Somehow the central authority has to give us leadership yeah. to get together by consensus or otherwise and, and and make it sustainable and resilient. And that's what Director Asuncion's office is supposed to be. They are the State Office of Planning. They are supposed to be setting out all the plans for all of the different governmental 
um, agencies throughout the entire state that you then take a look at and check to see whether or not your plan dovetails in and achieves that overarching goal. There's an idea. All the plans should be consistent. They should be consistent and connected. You heard it here on Think Tech. Now you're going to hear, hear a short break, and when we come back, Michelle and Bear are going to take us through the actual program. How exciting! We're going to hear about the big name speakers and roughly decide, or at least understand, what they're going to say. That's next Wednesday, <laughs> January 10th. Yes. At what time? At 1 p.m. At 1, 1 p.m. in the state legislature auditorium, auditorium. right there in the yes. Capitol. Okay. Right after this break, we're going to give you a detailed description. You'll see. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. It sounds like scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Hi, I'm Ethan Elm host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. I'm Jay Fidel, and I told you we'd be back, like MacArthur. No, I'm kidding around. Okay, we'd be back, and we are talking about making good plans for a sustainable, resilient Hawaii with our special guests, um, Michelle Daigle and um, Aaron Bear Brach. Okay, they are both graduate research assistants at Hawaii Energy Policy Forum in the School of Social Sciences at UH Manoa, and they're both involved in planning the, uh, uh, this uh, legislative briefing January 10th next week in the Capitol Auditorium. So it's divided in three parts. Yes. Tell me the three parts. We'll rotate. Tell me the three parts and what the scope of each part is. Okay, so the first, we have three different panels. The first panel is a keynote panel. Second is our state panel with state representatives on it. And the third one we'll be f finishing with the county panel. First one, what's the scope? So that one is really um, meant to provide um, a background and a foundation for the discussion for the entire day. Um, it's it's going to be di discussing climate change. It's going to be discussing the role of um, legislation and mitigating that and connecting, cross-connecting all the different sectors we were talking about earlier. Um, in a cohesive manner. This is foundational it's stuff. foundational. So that the legislators who attend or listen on, they get these things in their offices, they can listen to what's going on elsewhere in the Capitol. And if they look at the videos, we'll take Think Tech video yeah. that day too. Yeah. Um, so they can get an idea of the connections, the interconnection yes. of all these things. That ecosystem you're describing is a really good description. Mm -hmm. So tell us who's on this first panel, the keynoters. Okay. As it were. So um, the first person um, is um, Denise Antoli, and she's going to be talking about the intersection of climate change um, and renewable energy. Um, and then next she's we She's a lawyer. She is a lawyer. She's, she's a law professor. She's a law professor she's, over she's at... She's the uh, number two uh, at, I think at, she's the, the associate at university dean. law school. Yeah, yeah she has done... Research, research, research she's done a lot of research on environmental yeah. science. Yeah, she's and, an environmental lawyer yeah. and teacher. Yes. Um, so she can talk about the legal structure. Yeah, she's... I think it's really important that whatever we plan, we have to execute. And if you're going to execute, you have to make statutes. And mm -hmm. the statutes should be in, in their own landscape uh, consistent with other statutes. Exactly. She's the, the next the to action type of pr perspective yeah. okay. where she's really, she, she's going to to survey the field and then she's going to show us how we can translate that over into actionable policies and laws okay. that we can use to help structure and plan. So we'll figure out what the existing, you know, statutory framework is, we'll figure yeah. out what we do when we, we take a part of that plan and try to implement yeah. through New laws. Exactly. Okay, who else you got? 
So you want um, to there's him? Leo Asuncion, which is the director of the State Office of Planning. He's going to talk about you how... You mentioned him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, he's your co-partner in this whole deal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And he's going to talk about how uh, the State Office of Planning is going to be the nexus of planning in the state of Hawaii mm -hmm. and kind of walking us through the process and uh, the, co the, the cohesion between planning through all the different counties and different silos, different departments. Yeah. So the operative word is planning. We're yeah. all about, we're going to find out. Because, you know, you can, you can go ad hoc, and sometimes the legislature does go ad hoc without considering the effect of what it's doing as against other statutes and, and other priorities. Mm -hmm. A plan helps you resolve the priorities yeah. and the timing, you know? Exactly. And to, to determine what's first and what's more important and how much money you should be spending on this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, because sometimes what you want to do may cost more, but it's more essential than these lower hanging fruit that you mm -hmm. want to grab yeah, at, yeah, right? Yeah. So it pays to take a look at that plan. It's like having a good outline when yeah. you're putting together a presentation. Yeah, but the problem is there's a lot, of, a lot of agencies in this state and other states that have their own planning group. So you know, planning group here, planning group there. But that's the whole point with Leo Sunshine's office is that's actually part of it. You, you want to have a centralized plan, but you need it to be adaptable to different situations. It's just you need it to have um, cohesive strands throughout all yeah. the, dis the, the disparate parts so they're not actually disparate. Yeah. They're yeah. working in synergy yeah. with the state. You're, and you're also suggesting by implication that the plan is not static. Exactly. Because life is not static. History mm -hmm. is not static. And geopolitical and, and, and ocean and earth science is not static. Is it? Right. And if you think of if it's static, then it's not resilient. Mm -hmm. Resiliency yeah. is all about malleability, flexibility, change, and, and making sure that you, you give and take with the situation at hand. Now I'm going to go to this program. Guarantee. <laughs> I'll be there. That's good to know. <laughs> okay, who's after Leo? Um, there's uh, Chip Fletcher from the SOAS. Oh, um, we've heard his name. He's yeah. been here. He's a very famous person in the world of sustainability and climate change. Um, and he'll be discussing the, the impacts that climate change will have on the state of Hawaii and the kind of the factors that will be influencing Hawaii specifically. So if hur hurricanes, rainfall, food security, and then I know he wants to touch on homelessness and what what that means. Wow, that's a lot to bite off. Yeah. What is he speaking for six hours? I think he has eight minutes or so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be very interesting because yeah. he's, been, he's been looking at this a long time, yeah. even before it became, you know, coin of the realm here, the way yeah. it is now. And he, he helped with the, the, sea, the sea level rise um, yeah. report he, he that just came He made charts, out. Or inundation mm -hmm. charts yeah. that we need to look at. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the charts are more threatening now than they were when he first made them, you know. Yeah. Here we are, we're going down that pipe. Yeah. It doesn't stand still. Yeah. Okay, who's after Chip? And then after Chip will be um, John Cole. He's over at HNEI, and he'll be looking at the, um, the, the scientific research behind energy and looking at how that can come into play in our plans um, in regards to um, sustainability, resiliency. Yeah, this is all consistent with the notion that Hawaii is a laboratory. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're alone, but also because we have these resources. We have we guys do. like Fletcher, we have mm -hmm. guys like John Cole, HNEI, mm -hmm. um, can find uh, things out in connection with not only with energy, but the intersection of energy and other things that we could not only use ourselves, but mm -hmm. we can teach to the mainland who may not have the same level of awareness about these things. Yeah, we could, um, I mean, Hawaii is a leader in so many different um, venues, so many different um, areas and arenas. This is where we can be a leader again, yeah. where we can really show the mainland, A, what Hawaii has to offer in terms yeah. of research, in terms of driving the conversation, yeah. and um, to be a beacon of, of hope in how yeah. we, we, we can figure. I want to tell you something. Assuming we can garner that reputation, which I hope we can. Maybe this program you guys are working on will help us garner that reputation. If a bad storm happens and we go down the pike like Puerto Rico, yeah. we're not going to be a leader anymore. That's right. <laughs> we're That's... going to be into survival <laughs> mode. So we have to be well prepared in we order do. to demonstrate that we're well prepared. Exactly. <laughs> okay. That's the end of that panel. That's the end of that yeah. panel. Panel two now. What's the next one? That's, uh, a, that's the state panel. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, just a moment ago the prioritization that needs to be done for the state, and that's exactly what they're going to be speaking about is how 
there are different projects that will be done and different plans that are proposed to them, but there needs to be a, a cost-benefit analysis of showing, oh, this needs to be done, it'll benefit this amount of people, and it should be prioritized right. one or right. two. That's for the planners to do that. You cannot expect a given legislature, a legislator or legislative committee to get down into the weeds that way. You've got to have a careful plan with, you've got to bring your resources mm -hmm. and scientists and sociologists, whatever, together. Yeah. And so they figure out the short strokes and they make a recommendation to the legislature and then the legislature tests on that and looks into that and takes action on that. Mm -hmm. So that's the way the process, I think, should work. And I hope, that's, I hope I'm right. I hope it comes out that way in this, in this panel program. Okay, second panel. Uh, on the last panel is, oh, the second, you want me to go through each of them. First, it will be Vice Chair Will Asparo. So he's going to be talking about the perspective of, of what needs to happen um, in the legislator, le legislature from the Senate perspective. And um, we just had a conversation with him today, and he was saying how he's heard so many different projects, over 200, and he can just name a few um, with just his hand that have actually come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And part of that, he said, has to be do with really laying out really clearly um, the, the steps that need to be taken to achieve these plans so it doesn't fizzle out. So he yeah. wants something really well laid out right. so he can turn around and assess it for the state of Hawaii and then implement it. And get public support. Get public He's support. Good at that, I think. He's exactly. Good at that. Yeah. So, and that's really key. <clears throat> Who else? Um, there will be uh, Chair Chris Lee from the House Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection. Um, he'll be speaking on what risks are posing to uh, the state of Hawaii and what needs to be done to protect the shorelines and our, our land. He's a fellow who could actually do a lot of lawmaking yeah. <laughs> as a chair of the Energy Environmental Committee. Okay, who else? Um, next we have Suzanne Case over at DLNR. Yeah. Um, she plans to um, address uh, climate change and adaptation in relevance to the other programs that they have. Um, and looking at how that's going to create a res sustainable, resilient Hawaii in regards to forestry, wildlife, land management, aquatics, she, she's et cetera. She's the land person. She, she is um, an extensive background yes, she in does. this. Um, I mean, 28 so big years. Big job, big agency, big responsibility. Yeah. And um, it's really great. That these, are, these are great people. Yeah, I yeah, think I she's going to bring quite a bit to this panel. Yeah. Yeah. Who else? Um, there's David Rodriguez from DOT, and he'll be speaking on HDOT's role in sustainability in the airports, the roads, and bit, all the transportation sector in Hawaii. Yeah, well, that, there's a lot of energy involved in that, yeah. and it's a catch-up game with transportation because mm -hmm. we really haven't paid that much attention to it, and we only have, what, five or 6,000 uh, electric cars in the state when we have a million um, fossil fuel cars. we got to make progress. Yeah. And we can't achieve, we, to your point, we cannot achieve sustainability without solving that problem. Exactly. We can't keep on using fossil fuel because fossil fuel is not sustainable. So if you want to have a sustainable place, mm -hmm. you got to make that shift. Mm -hmm. You do. And that's why DOT is so important. Yeah. He's important. He is really important. Who else? Then we have um, Scott Enright over at the Department of Agriculture, and he's going to be talking about the intersection of sustainability and food security um, and really looking at how we can create state, county, and private partnerships to mitigate any types of hazards in that realm in connection with climate change. Very important. Because if yeah. we're hungry, it's not working. Exactly. I think we only have about a week's worth of food yeah. at Except any one McDonald's, time. They have more. Well, McDonald's. Yeah. They don't. It's not real food. It's yeah. plastic. Exactly. You can't, you can't <laughs> live on that. Some of their food's okay, but you know you can't like, live on that. Yeah. So we have to figure out a way to grow agriculture. So exactly. again, this touches everything, doesn't it? It touches everything. It's economy. It's uh, it's locals working for other locals, it, it really creates that Ohana type of And we want these I think. panelists to make suggestions to the legislature, yeah. not only educating them, but make suggestions about what are the important initiatives that should be considered. Exactly. And the actions that need to be taken. Yeah. 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 Okay. That, that's, is that the end of the second panel? No, we have one more. Um, Luis um, Salaveria over at DBED. Oh, mm -hmm. another he, important he, Another very important department head, um, yeah. department head who's going to be talking about DBED and their resiliency programs and how they are envisioning resiliency within their department for the state. It's a very important department. And it, ostensibly, it's the connection with business, all of business in the state of Hawaii. So I'm yeah. sure he'll have. I hope you'll have some really important ideas. Louise, you've got to have some important ideas here, okay? Come through for us. 
All right. That's okay. that's the second panel. Mm -hmm. Third panel. Th third panel is the county panel. Yes, and they'll be speaking about um, what's going on in each county for resiliency and sustainability, and how they're engaging different stakeholders and the state legislature, and specifically what needs are need to be met for each county to be sustainable and resilient. This is great. You know, this this hasn't happened before. Counties are getting together. Yeah. You know, I don't know what happened this year. It must be the water. Something <laughs> changed, isn't it? They, they had a meeting a few weeks ago, representatives of all the energy energy offices on all, yeah. the, on all the neighbor islands and Oahu, and they get together and compare notes on what they're doing. And you know, it's happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. They are on the ground, so they can really help themselves and others. Yeah, yeah, this is the most exciting part of the entire program because, I mean, I'll just, I'll, I'll read them off to you. We have Ron Whitmore over at Hawaii um, County. We have Fred Riddell from Maui. He's the energy commissioner over there. We have Josh Stamboro for a city and county of Honolulu. And then we have um, Mike Dolig over at the Department of Planning on um, Kauai. And they have been in the thick of things. And they're, they're already communicating. And they already have several different points that they need to bring to the legislature. Yeah. Um, and the legislature needs to hear what they are doing and what they need. Exactly. Yeah. It's brilliant, you know, Michelle, there, brilliant. It's a great, great program, great panels, great thoughts, great ideas, a great need to discuss and achieve action. So this is the big intersection is not only between the subjects that will be covered, it's between these people and the legislature who could actually do something. I'm so excited. I thought about going to be there. So close for me, okay? What should people remember about this? We're really trying to make good plans for sustainability in Hawaii, and it's essential for us to have these good plans and to, to get out of silos and to, to communicate to make sure that Hawaii is sustainable across broad sectors. Yeah. We want to avoid any type of um, severe hazards to yeah. our way of we, life. We want to survive. We want to survive and we want to thrive. Mm -hmm. It's not just survival, it's, it's thriving. Right. Okay, that's good. And, and, and kudos to the School of Social Sciences for putting you guys on it, for you know, being the organizers of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and encouraging this kind of program. Bear, now you get to tell everybody where and when and how they can get there. Um, well, it is next week, um, exactly one week from right now, uh, uh, the Hawaii State Auditorium at the Hawaii State Capitol, 1 to 4 p.m. Um, you can get there. I believe it's Bear Tanya is the best access to this. Yeah. You can you can do your yeah. you can ride Vicky yeah. over there. Yeah. You can take the bus. You, you could can. ride your EV. You could walk. You could carpool. You could carpool. <laughs> so many ways. Yeah. So many ways yeah. to get Complete there. Complete streets run. Complete legislative streets. Okay, and also we'll we'll make a video of it and we'll play it on OC yes. sixteen so you can see it after the fact if you didn't make it in time. Yes. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Great discussion, Bear. You guys are great. See you soon. Aloha.